have one more session. Nós teremos mais uma sessão. And I will speak in English with you guys. E ela vai falar em inglês com vocês. She's my translator. Sou a tradutora. And I want to say in English. E eu quero falar em inglês. Because the next pastors. Porque os próximos pastores. Will preach in English. Irão pregar em em inglês. And they are a miracle. E eles são um milagre. I can tell you guys. Eu não posso falar para vocês. I can. Eu posso falar para vocês. This couple is very special. Que esse casal é muito especial. They have a heart for the church. Eles têm um coração pela igreja. They love the church. Eles amam a igreja. They love people. Eles amam pessoas. They love you. Eles amam vocês. And what God is doing in Fort Myers? E o que Deus tem feito em Fort Myers? It's just the beginning. É só o começo. I want to say thank you. Quero falar obrigada. Because you guys are the best hosts ever. Porque vocês são os melhores anfitriões. Thank you for the the guys from the sound system. Obrigado ao pessoal da mesa de som. The worship team, a equipe de louvor, all the staffs, toda a equipe. I know you guys are the best. Eu sei que vocês são os melhores. Because you have the best pastors. Porque vocês têm os melhores pastores. Can you put your hands together for this couple? Vocês podem bater palmas para esse casal? Pastor Raph and Pastor Juliana. Pastor Rafael e Pastora Juliana. Welcome. <laughs> Sejam bem-vindos. Feel like home. Seja, sinta se em casa. Now I'm gonna say in Portuguese. Yeah. <laughs> Agora ela vai falar em português. Irmãos, eu amo demais esse casal. Brothers, I really love this couple. Deus nos realmente nos conectou numa aliança. God really connected us with an alliance. E a gente ama vir aqui. And we love to come here. A gente se sente amado. We feel loved. Nossos filhos são amigos. Our children are friends. E as nossas próximas gerações vão servir a Deus juntos. In our next generation, we'll serve the Lord vão together. Vão continuar juntos servindo ao Senhor. We'll continue to serve the Lord together. E Deus sabe o que eles passaram para chegar até aqui. And God knows what they <laughs> what they passed to be here. E eles permaneceram. And they persevered. É, e a Rebeca já está chorando. And Rebecca is already crying. Eu não vou chorar porque eu estou feliz demais. I'm not gonna cry because I'm so happy. Porque eles sabem de onde Deus os tirou e para onde Deus está levando. Because they know where God took them from and where God is putting them. Uma vez nós falamos para eles, vamos mudar de cidade. One time we we told them, let's change the city, let's move from the city lugar. to another place. E eu lembro que o pastor Rafael falou, não, Deus me mandou para cá. And I remember that Pastor Rafael said that God sent them here. E aqui nós vamos permanecer. And here they're gonna stay. E eu vou te falar que aqui está um casal. And I'm gonna tell you, here is a couple. Que independente da circunstância mais difícil. That doesn't matter the circumstances. The Eles most são prova que é possível permanecer. They are proof that you can persist. No propósito, in the pur no purpose, chamado, in the calling, no casamento, in the ma marriage. E que vocês estão vendo aqui é just the beginning. And what you are seeing here is just the beginning. Quero chamar discipuladores aqui à frente. I want to call the disciples here up front. Adriana, Bruna, Gabi. Ana, Adriana, Bruna, Gabi, Britney, Anna, Brittany, e a Rebecca. And Rebecca. Oh Essas não são discipuladoras, elas são filhas. They are not disciples, they are daughters. E todo o seu investimento, Ju. And all your investment, Não Ju. só no Pepe e no André. Not only Pepe and the dad. Mas nesses filhos que vocês têm. But in all these children that you guys have. A intensidade do Pastor Rafael. Intensity of Pastor Rev. De não descer de escada rolante, mas descer de escada normal. 
He chose for for the 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 He's regular stairs, no escalator, <laughs> because they want to go faster. <laughs> It's looked like him in the ministry, yeah. in his house. His intensity in sports. <laughs> Esse é o pastor Rafael, a pastora Juliana. This is Pastor Raf and Pastor Ju. E nós como igreja queremos honrar vocês. And we as a church we want to honor them. E eu fiz questão de trazer a conferência para cá. And I made sure to bring the conference here. Quando a Ju pediu e deu a ideia. When Ju asked and gave their idea. E eu falei why not? I answered why not? Well, e eu sei que eles not? trabalharam duro para fazer essa conferência acontecer. And I know they worked really hard to make this conference happen. E quantos acharam que foi com excelência? And how many of you thought that it was with excellency? Eles pensaram em cada detalhe. They thought about every detail. Eles trabalharam em cada detalhe. They worked in every every detail. Eles oraram por nós. They prayed for us. Para que cada detalhe falasse ao seu coração. So that each, each detail would speak in your heart. E agora eu vou deixar elas falarem. And now I'm gonna let them say something. Pastora, um, I want to say something from all of us. We are so blessed to walk with you. We are so honored to be called not only disciples, but daughters, as Pastora um, Giselle said. You are a woman of faith. Everything you do, you do by faith. You are a woman full of the Holy Spirit. We see that you are full of the Holy Spirit in every detail, in everything that you do. We love the heart, your heart for the kids' ministry. You inspire us, all of us, so much. We are more than honored. We, we feel like privileged to be called your spiritual daughters, to walk with you, to have you always lifting us up, encouraging us. We see that you lead with grace and truth. You always tell the truth, and, but always with grace and so much love. And this pushes us to grow even more in God in everything that we do. And we are so thankful, so thankful to walk with you and Pastor Ref, because Pastor Ref is our father as well. <laughs> We love the way that he leads. He leads with so much passion and we feel so much passion to lead the youth, the kids, the adults, because they they lead by love. We see that they lead by love and we are honored to be with you, to walk with you and we love you so much. We want to give you something. <laughs> We, while we were um, in a store, um, we were looking for something for Pastora. And I, don't, procurando alguma coisa para pastora. and I don't know if you guys can see. Não sei se vocês podem ver. But this is a woman lifting up a kid. É uma mulher levantando uma criança. And God really spoke with us. E Deus realmente falou conosco. Because she is this woman of God that Ela lifts é up de Deus. this Levantando next generation with joy geração. and love. Com amor e alegria. We love you, Pastor. Aleluia. Amen. They will never share that with me because they know I don't like much surprises because it makes me cry. Oh, Jesus. Aleluia. Amen. I will preach now, Jesus. How are we going to preach? Are you guys ready? Hallelujah. Did you receive anything so far in this conference? Come on, lift it up to your two hands. Father, fill this room. We want revelation. We know this is just the beginning of a great movement. You began. You are faithful to bring into perfect completion, God. You are the one that is stirring things new in our hearts for this next season ahead of us. A season of acceleration. A season of increase, of growth. And things are going to take and happen fast. We believe in Jesus' name. If anyone in this room agree with me, shout amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be Hallelujah. seated. Thank you so much. I always said that, that I have the best church ever. <laughs> I feel so loved and I feel so loved for each one. And I know that they put a lot of effort and 
work so hard to bring this excellence above and beyond. The above and beyond. Thank you so much, girls yes. and worship team and staff, everybody. Thank you. I'm so I feel so privileged to have you as my church. Call you my church. Um, can you open more? This word, God placed this word in my heart uh, around one month um, ago and was so powerful. No need to change anything, he fixed it. Okay. Just keep saying. This is so. And when the Pastora Gabriela started to preach yesterday, and then Pastora Gisele, and then Pastora Marcia, and I, I just look at Raf uh, Rafael and say, wow. Because it's everything that we put in our word today. Yep. It's every detail, even the details, even the prophetic words, even the, the, the things. We will, you will see, oh, I think I heard this. <laughs> it's because what God really wants to confirm in your heart what he wants to say in your life, in your ministry. Just if you, I, I, we will say a lot of same words that they preach, but it's just to, for you can see that God really wants to confirm this word in your ministry, amen? In your life, in your family, in your motherhood, in your leadership, amen? We call this message, keep moving, even, even whatever. And we believe it's time for you to keep moving. Just keep moving. No matter what is the circumstance, I want my slide, there you go. I want everyone in this room keep moving and even somehow... Um, our story, part of our testimony can inspire you today and also can inspire your team. We're going to really be happy and full of joy. Uh, I want that this, this word can impact your, like I said, your ministry and your lives. And sometimes we, we, I want, we want to put together in four topics uh, some, some, um, things that happen or circumstances that happen in our lives and in our ministry that sometimes stop us to keep moving, sometimes make us to stop. And uh, I love the uh, last Monday we were praying together as a, a team, as a church, and we start to prophesy. And one word that uh, um, I think Luana shared with us was that, uh, that God is changing our shoes. And I just want to repeat this prophetic word because Pastor Gabriela said this last uh, Friday, yesterday night. That she said again, she prophesied again, God is changing our shoes. Amen. And we put in, in, our, in our feet a running shoes. Amen. It's not just uh, any shoes. It's a special shoes that God wants you uh, um, uh, make you run, not just walk, not to stop anymore, but run. In, we are in this acceleration year, and I believe that God has much more for us. Amen? Now, we preached a few weeks ago in Ecclesiastes chapter 3. We all know this text. We're going to make reference about it. It's when the wise Solomon writes about many seasons that comes in one person's life. We have our lives, so we can recall events, moments, seasons, specific seasons. And, and Solomon is bringing in this awesome chapter in Ecclesiastes, these various different seasons that a person's face. And it's about, some scholars say, 26 to 28 different seasons a, person's, a person can face. But in that amazing list, you will not find any season of giving up. Can you say this to the sister or brother close to you? There is no season. Come on, let me hear your voice say, there is no season of giving up. Actually, on the contrary, the Bible says in Galatians chapter 6, and let us not grow weary of doing good. For in due season, we will reap. If, everybody say if, everybody say if, we do not give up. So the season of reaping, it's always waiting us if we do not give up. That's the only season we have never give up. And the first one that I want to share is keep moving despite your limitations. 
I know that sometimes our limitations um, may bring pressures and bring things that we, uh, when you see our leadership, uh, when you uh, look to ourselves and see that we have no skills or uh, I need, uh, you know, that moment that uh, people charge you something and you have no answers or in your discipleship when uh, people leave you and, and you think that is because of your, of your limitation. And, and God gave me this word. Isaiah. Isaiah. I'm sorry. For, uh, 54, 1 and 3. Sing, O Barry 1, who did not bear, break forth into singing and cry loud. You who have not been in labor. For the children of the desolate one will be more than the children of her who is married, Hallelujah. says the Lord. Enlarge the place of your tent and let the curtains of your habitation be straight out. Do not hold back. Lend your cords and strengthen your states. You, for you will spread abroad. abroad Abroad. abroad, to the right and to the left, and, uh, and uh, your offspring will possess the nation, and will people the desolate cities. Um, last um, July, last year, last year, last July, June, I went to the kids' conference in Brazil, and God gave me this word that he told me, uh, prepare yourself because I, over, I will overflow your ministry, your barns. This, will be the, this is the, what the conference was talking about. And when God, uh, you know, when you are in the conference, just, uh, um, just one tip. Just be careful because God he will talk to you and give you a prophetic word. Like I said in the beginning of the day, it, the conference is the place that God wants to give you words that will stir up your faith in your heart for the next season. And I believe that we are entering the next season. Amen. 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 And then God told me that in June. And say, amen, I receive, I cry, I receive. But I didn't expect what is, will happen. <laughs> and then in the end of July, God came with the building and I go, in the end of August, God gave us the daycare and say, wow, this is an overflow. But this is God overflowing our barns. And, but, you know, sometimes when it's God, God is doing things like that, or we see the, the uh, things that is not in our control anymore, sometimes you feel like that. We feel say, wow, I have no... Uh, wisdom, I have no intelligence for that. Open a daycare, how I can do that? I'm not, I, I, I'm learning English. I'm still learning. I, I'm, I'm still learning how to do with uh, uh, um, the people uh, from this, this nation that I love so much. And uh, how to, to, I don't know how to educate them and bring this kind of, uh, uh, the, you know, the limitations and God start to stretch us up more and more. But this cannot be, a, 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 a limitation cannot stop you. Limitation cannot uh, stop you for what God has for you. Yes, sometimes we have fears in our hearts. Yes, sometimes when God calls us, say, oh, well, how I, I can do now? But one thing that is so good that's so amazing that God put people around us that uh, um, help to help us. And, you know, um, when we start to plant a church and the church starts to grow, uh, you see, like, this happened with me. I know that happened with you as well as a pastor and principal. The people, God start to put people around us that is better than us, that have more skill than us. That is more intelligent than us. That more say the, uh, they have good, a better personality. Oh, they are so funny. I'm a person so uh, I don't know. You know, I'm quiet. I'm not that uh, peop that the people enjoy to stay with me. You know, I'm not talkative. Uh, sometimes I feel awkward to talk. But and I, I start to feel like that. Say 
how I can do now? Have much, uh, the people is better than me. My disciple is much better than me. And uh, they are awesome. They have a lot of skills, and I'm not. And, I, I, and when this starts to happen with me and it starts to stop me, God gave me this word. And he said to me, For as in one body we have many members, and the members do not all have the same function. Five, so we, uh, verse five, so we through many are one body in, are one body in Christ and individually members one of another. And the, just the Holy Spirit said, I put these people together with you to build a strong church. And this is why you need them. Not see them as a limitation for you, but see them as um, a plus in your ministry. Um, can I say, um, add, add, in add your, on, uh, add on uh, uh, people that will help to build a strong church. Amen. But talk a little bit about what we are sharing on comparison. The problem that instead of inspiring, um, decrease. Can you speak a little bit about yes, that? Yes, because this is kind of what women yes, are, yes. <laughs> we uh, have this problem of comparison. We like to compare all the time, I was uh, with with Rafael's family here last two two weeks ago. Why has to be my family? <laughs> but that's okay. Because they are five sisters. Imagine five girls. Like I imagine their parents, five girls talking and running around. And a Monday, last Monday after they leave the the house, they. All of all four my aunts were in my house was in my house at the same time, all talking. And I, you know, if, uh, if you know me better, I not talk this much, and but they talk for me and they answer me and they no, they, they ask, ask me and they answer for me and it was so awesome. But I start, to, but it was interesting because when I was talking and they are uh, joking with each other, I was thinking about this word. They say how. Um, uh, women are, yes, they, they like comparing each other all the time. Imagine in the house five girls comparing each other. So I think they have a lot of wisdom. The parents have to be wise to raise the, the women around them. But anyways, well, so uh, in this kind of comparison, be careful because uh, this is top us as well, especially for us as a woman. This is top us because we think that because we don't have the likes on Instagram or we are not uh, 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 people around us all the time or one person say, um, who said that? Uh, Pastor, Pastor, Pastor Gabby from England said to me, oh, it's so hard to not love you yesterday. Well, I, I'm so glad I'm here because, no, it's so hard. One person said already for you that doesn't like you. And I was laughing, and I, I told her, I just turned on her and say, even just you say that you are a pastor and have the tie of the pastor, the people ju just uh, like, I don't like you because you are a pastor, you know. But this is part of the calling, no problem. But it's a part of the calling when we lead people to Jesus. It's a part of the calling uh, 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 people don't like us. Be in peace, amen. This is not can be your limitation. This cannot stop your ministry. With the experience of my aunts in my house was really funny because they, when they were all together, they were laughing, they were making inner jokes all the time. They were just like, you know, teasing each other like good sisters. But when they were alone in my house, they were speaking what the other sisters were supposed to be. <laughs> all, the, all the four, they were doing that. My, my, my sister is here as well, <laughs> and she can get, like uh, uh, agree with me. Like when she come, you know your aunt needs to do this and that. I say, I know, I, I know <laughs> that she needs. So it's all, always like the comparison have this tendency just to di uh, uh, discourage your heart. But while we were preparing this message, you know, this, this word came, came to our heart. Like we don't need to envy anyone's gift, um, open doors, skills, intelligence, and the favor. Our father, he doesn't have a limit resource barn to stretch our uh, uh, barns up. God has limitless resource. 
We can simply ask God for the same blessings. You say the same blessings, absolutely the same blessings. And not that you want to steal from anyone. You just want the same favor. He's the same Father. He can give you the same blessings. So many times uh, uh, I see, you know, pastors having this great influence in the United States. They say, Lord, you brought me to this nation. I want the same thing. I don't know how many of you guys are falling up with this great, uh, uh, he's very famous now in the internet, Pastor Mike Todd. And he, he literally bought this building out of nowhere. I said, God, why not us? Why not us? But anyways, this is not my point. Number two, we want you to keep moving when it's taking longer than you expect. Ecclesiastes chapter 3. I told you we were going to share a little bit about it. Verse 1, for everything, say with me, everything. everything. It's, it's important to include everything here because maybe you think some things are not in a proper time. But everything, there is a season in a time for every matter under heaven. So time is one of the greatest challenge in the kids' ministry because you can predict what will take place in that child's life. So yes, we are trying to share positive, encouraging stories. But who was not touched by that sad story that Pastor Giselle just shared with us? Like they poured life and investment in that girl, but it didn't end up like we planned and dreamed. And, and, and that definitely hurts our heart. And sometimes time is the big test that wants to stop us. Because we are called to be sowers, it's scattering seed. But with the confidence that the one that brings the growth, 1 Corinthians 3, the one that brings growth is the Lord. Verse 7, so neither who plants nor he who waters is anything, but only God who gives the growth. Now the, the good news is that we are, say with me, we are, we are. In, a in a season of acceleration. Of acceleration. So it's better you buckle up because things are going to move faster. So the word, the prophetic word that is upon us as a movement is Amos chapter 9 that says, Behold, the days are coming. And I dare to say they are here. Say with me, they are here. Yeah. The days are here, declares the Lord, when the plowman shall overtake the reaper and the trader of grapes, him who sows the seed. The mountains shall drip sweet wine and all the hills shall flow with it. Now, the promise is that while the guy is trying to prepare the soil, just grinding the soil for the coming of the seed, the reaper, the, the, the person that will literally take the harvest is coming after him. He's coming and overtaking the guy that didn't even plant the seed. He's been overtaken by the reaper. The, the, the preparer of the soil is being taken over, overtaken by the reaper. How is that even possible? Only the Lord, out of time, owner of time, the one that speaks as acceleration in our ministry can, and he really can, take a child and turn that child in a disciple maker. Now, if we were just encouraging you out of just faith, it would be one thing. But we have plenty of stories here of little kids, even coming out of their elementary school, becoming disciple makers. So they, 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 we are, we're thinking we're preparing the soil. I don't know if you got the image here. Put it back again. Amos chapter 9, 13. We were just preparing the soil. Maybe one day that little child will be saved. Maybe one day that little child will be discipled, taken care by a middle schooler, high schooler leader. But this is what the promise says. Why we were thinking we were, what, the plowman, the preparer of the soil. What happened is that that soil, which was that little kid, became a reaper, became a disciple maker. Are you guys following trying to say? Maybe so prophetic that maybe you're missing the point here. But this is very key, specifically over the kids' ministry. I know we received this word for us as a movement, buying church movement. But the fulfillment of this word, uh, like it it's really can be visually an experience in the kids' ministry. But do you guys agree with me? Because we see the kids as just a soil. We just prepare. We never know what is going to happen. But in times of acceleration, we can see that soil, the plowman, which is our child, our, our kids, our children, becoming reapers, becoming evangelists, becoming missionaries. We can see that. Isaiah chapter 6, verse, verse 22, the least one shall become a clan. Let me hear a good amen, everybody. Amen. The least one, the small one will become a network. 
a church planter, a, 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 a life group planter. Now, th this is so interesting because this happens with everyone that maybe you are investing time and you're, you know, pouring your life into their, their lives. You never know what is going to happen, but more specific with the children ministry. And the smallest one, a mighty nation. Oh, my goodness. It's not only a clan. It is a nation. It is a generation. I am the Lord. In its time, I will hasten it. And we, could, we could make the divine version Bible to say, and in its time, I will accelerate it. I will put things to be faster than you were planning. So an example of hasten time, it's what actually happened in our family. So I started to lead when I was 16 years old. And one day we're sitting on the table and we're bragging to each other, me and my wife, who started leading life group first. So I said, I started when I was 16. And she says, I started when I was 15. And we're just like bragging and the boys were hearing us. And Andre at the time, he was 13. He says, it's better than I start leading my life group. And he actually, after a few weeks later, we challenged him. We definitely supported, make, you know, the whole support around him. And he started to lead when he was 13. And Pedro started to lead when he is 12. So it, there is this, this acceleration process that maybe we thought we we're going to take a little while to take place. But I know that sometimes when the journey is taking longer than you expected, when the path is bumping, uh, you really think that maybe that's not the best uh, uh, experience and timing uh, is the test of perseverance. But if you don't give up, if you keep moving, you also will celebrate this unspeakable joy before the Lord. Amen. And sometimes uh, people give up to lead the kids because they don't see uh, right away the fruits. Like the pastor said, like, oh, I want to multiply, I want to open life groups. But it's the opposite. If one, when you start to share the gospel with one adult, and wait them even raise their hands in the service. It's take like six weeks. No, I'm sorry, six months, a year, to ask them to pray or to believe. Take like to see miracles. Yeah, if you can agree with me. Take like six months to one year to be a disciple. Two years, we start a um, uh, daycare. Four weeks already. First month, yay, and. The first week, I start to, and me and the girls, yeah, Gabby and Adriana, um, the, the director of the daycare, we, like, I give to, uh, twice a, a week, I give the devotional with them, I do the devotional with them, and then another week. The first week, they cry, they run, they didn't pay attention. The second week, we try, like, let's hold the hands, maybe they, start, they stay still, yes, two weeks. The third week, Jesus is so cute. They say amen. They jump. They worship. They close their eyes. And then the fourth week, the parents start to text us, say, wow, it's beautiful. I can't see now my kid call me to pray in the night. Oh, they now, every time that we pray if in, the, in the table, they scream amen because we scream amen. And they, they, they I, uh, Carol sent me a video of uh, her four-year-old daughter uh, singing in the bathroom, taking a shower and singing the same song that we sing in the, in the day here in the daycare. Four weeks. If you can see, can you see this? This is a miracle, yeah? This is the opposite what the devil put in our uh, mindset as a church. That takes so long to make a kid a disciple. No, they are disciples already. Amen. Yeah, so th this parallel, we were thinking, me and my wife, like I'm the adult, you know, we're together with other young adult leaders here. And it's just like this. It takes sometimes six, to, six months to a year for a person to respond in the basic Christian disciplines of praying daily, of memorizing Bible verses. And my wife is having results in four weeks. 
it, it's a lack of anointing or what? What in the world? No, it's because your idea of fruit, it's, it's wrong. Because our idea of fruit sometimes has to do with church attendance. And for us, pastors and church planters has to do with financial participation. But what the Bible calls fruit, you know what the Bible calls fruit, Galatians chapter 5. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. Now let's be honest. Who, who is faster to respond in what really is spiritual fruit? Who, like, who takes more time to really give back to the kingdom is spiritual fruit. You answer that. You answer that. Hallelujah. The third one is, if you are tired, keep moving. I know sometimes we get tired. Yes, yeah, sometimes we need rest. But have um, a, not a, have this, uh, how do we say, legitimate uh, tiredness. That sometimes you get tired, physical. Yes, you need sa Saturday morning to sleep. Amen. I need that. And <laughs> Saturday is actually my Saturday, but, um, my, but sometimes you see that the, the enemy and the devil put a, tie, a, a tiredness that is not um, right. You see that is heavy, that is um, it's not one thing that you are, it, it, like, you, see, you feel in your spirit that is one thing that the devil uh, want to stop you. And I will say the same word that Pastor uh, G Gabriella said yesterday, the same uh, verse. And, the, the, and when she's saying that the, the lion is sometimes, that is not a lion, the enemy, just worry like a lion. And this uh, tiredness Sometimes it's one thing that wants to stop us. And God gave me this, um, this word about Elijah. And when Elijah, he fought against, fight against a lot of prophets, if you remember this story, yes. Uh, they the, they ask, the, they pray for a fire from heaven. They stop the rain. A lot of miracles and wonders happen in their lives, in his life, I'm sorry. But one day, he got tired. He said to the Lord. And he said, uh, 1 Kings uh, 19.4. And he asked that he might die saying, it's enough now. Oh, Lord, take away my life. For I am, no, I am not better than my father's. And it's so interesting that he, he didn't see nothing anymore. He didn't see what God made in the past. He, he didn't see, he, he, saw, uh, he said that, um, yet I will leave 7,000 in Israel, all the knees that have not bowed to bow, and every mouth that has not kissed him. And God said to him, no, have people that is with you. You, you maybe inspire a lot of, he inspired a lot of these, these 7,000 uh, people to... 7,000, to stand and continue not in, uh, continue to worship God. But even though these, he didn't see. He didn't see just tiredness. He just saw, say to God, God, I'm tired. I'm go ready to leave. I'm ready to go to heaven. And sometimes these kind of things pass in your mind. You forgot what God made in the past. You know, you just are tired and and one, but one thing so interesting about this, this chapter, 1 Kings chapter 19, if you read everything, the story, is when he was really tired, God provide him bread and water. And you have to remember this. Oh, every time that you get tired, you have to remember two things. That will be always water and bread. Bread means the word of God. How we can... Uh, um, go uh, not go away. Um, step um, out of this tiredness. Listen the word of God. 
eating the bread, come to the conference, go to your life group, we have, go to the service, don't, don't miss church, don't miss your discipleship. The, uh, go um, uh, make this. I know that you are so tired during the week, but go in your meeting, your discipleship, in your life group, because the word of God help us to go and to keep walking. And the water as well. Water means the uh, the Holy Spirit. Praying tongues, fill of the fill uh, uh, you up with the Holy Spirit. Uh, uh, have a, a daily uh, prayer time in your life, even in your car, put the sound uh, uh, loud and start to pray, start to scream, like Pastor Gabriela said yesterday, scream, say to the, the enemy, go away, uh, uh, open your mouth, open your, uh, be filled with the Holy Spirit. And the second thing, first, the bread and the water, and the second thing, you know, it's so interesting, because in the end of this chapter, God take Elijah and bring to Eli Elijah and bring to Elisha. You know that after he said that he's tired, God bring Elisha to his life. And what did this mean? The means of that the church. Because we need each other. We need each other in this tired time, tiredness time. We need each other. We God bring people to close to you, to walk with you, to say, you can do it. Go, keep going. I know that you are tired, but keep going. There you can do it. So come on. Like <laughs> this two last month, we just lay down in the bed and we look at each other and say, you can do it. Tomorrow, <laughs> keep going. One more giant tomorrow. One more giant tomorrow. I know that our body is tired, but our spirit is filled of the Holy Spirit. Because we have each other to say that. Amen. And you, God is saying to you, in your tired time in your life, you have two, these two things. You have the bread and the water, and you have people around you. You have one church that loves you, that is for you, that encourage you. Don't give up on them, but walk with them. Amen? Uh, I'm just feeling to share this brief story. You guys have to do something about this time because we're not going to respect this time now. Okay, I'm sorry, guys. So... Uh, what I, I have uh, no, again, no false modesty, again, but I'm going to brag a little bit about really our passion for the church. But again, we don't take this for granted. It's because it really works. Now, the, the fact that me and my wife are really mentally sane here in this stage, it's not because we're strong. Come on, fight, high five here, we can do it. No, no, no. It's because of the local church. There is a therapeutic power from the community of the church and you know that but so many times we devalue that for whatever reason it's just the devil again pushing us aside to make us an easy prey just with the illustration we're going to little share a little bit about that but i always share this story because this is how it illustrates a little bit about our grief time so in 2016 in our grief time we we're totally out of mind we we're devastated because our little one went to heaven and we were like literally insane, emotionally destroyed. And this actually happened one day. So one of the disciples, Elisha, Tulio came to me and said, Pastor, do you remember that day I came to visit you? And he says, what are you talking about? And he started to describe when he came to visit me. And I was, I was uh, uh, cutting the grass. I was mowing my, my, my yard. But there was no grass to be cut it because I already had mown the grass probably seven, eight times. I was just doing out of, you know, like I'm just doing something useful for the house. But I already had mown the grass for so many times. There was no grass. Only dust and little rocks, like small little pebbles spread. So I was mowing the thing. So dust was going around. I was sweat and the pebbles were beating around and was cutting me was really hurting me, but I was not aware of the hurt. So he told me that he came and said, Pastor, do you remember that day I came to you and I look at you, you look like a monster. Like you, you were coming after war or something. He said, what are you talking about? Pastor, I started to talk to you and you just say, Tulio, man, we're going to win the city. We're going to conquer the city. And you start to preach to me. I said, no, man, I really don't remember anything. Pastor, that day I look at you and say, I lost my pastor. He became insane. Like, we're never going to have our pastor again. Look at him. 
and he says that he left that meeting with me, which I don't recall. I really don't have it in my brain this moment. And he said that he called some disciples that he had, you know, that the church had at the time. And we gathered together in the middle of the night for praying for you and your family. So I interrupted him and said, that I remember. That prayer is I remember. So th that's, that's so important for moments of tiredness. That you are exhausted. You have no strength anymore. Instead of actually taking vacation, go to church. Get together to your discipleship. Just, you know, really surround you with the body of Christ. Receive the sap of the vine, the blood of the body, and you're going to be restored. Number four, now we need the right image of God in order to keep moving. If you have a distorted image of God, you will always be tempted to stop. And eventually you will stop. So, like we said, and Pastor Marcia sh shared with us, the devil wants to distort the image of God because essentially his goal, his target is our own identity. It's who we are as called people, as children of God. If he can really distort the image of God, like in Genesis chapter 3, why you cannot eat such tree? Or Matthew chapter 4, if you are the son of God, is really God that good? Did he really call you to that ministry? But if he, really, if he call you, why are you suffering misunderstandings? Why you cannot raise leaders? Why things does not go as you expected? Why people does not, do not respond to your investment? So these are accusing voices of the enemy. And we know that much of our ministry is determined by how we see God. But I need to say that God is not a distant boss giving orders to these reluctant servants to do what they hate to do. Which, by the way, we really uh, stop this language in our church, here in our local church. And no one will ever lead in Vine Church, Southwest Florida, because they must, because they have. It is a privilege to lead. It is a really honor to lead. And God is not this husband that charges a very expensive forgiveness when his wife buys something in the credit card that he was not aware of. I forgive you, but give me the credit card back. No, no, no. God is a good shepherd that celebrates every time he finds the lost sheep. He is the loving father that always makes a party for the prodigal that comes back home. God is the one that makes a celebration in heaven when we grow in a new dimension of his grace. And our leadership should only be the result of the growing of this understanding of grace. The more we grow in grace, more committed we should be. We, should, we are not committed out of fear in the sense of being afraid and frightened. We are in amazement. We are in awe of his love and grace poured on our lives. So the, the way to think is how I will not lead. How I will miss such a great opportunity. And you know, tribulations is one more... One, um the enemy used tribulation to reinforce this wrong image of God. Because in the middle of the tribulation, that come in our minds the lies of the devil, yeah? That he, he doesn't like you. Now, why you are passing through this? Why you are facing that? Why God leave you? Why God uh, uh, take your son to heaven? Why you are God divorced? Why, no, I have a lot of expectation in your life. Why you are facing this? Let me say something. We are in the fallen world. Tribulation is part of this fallen world. It's not because God wants. It's the opposite. Yeah, everybody already read the beloved heart. You remember that? God gave you beautiful shoes, a beautiful uh, um, environment for the beloved heart. Yeah. And, but he chose the wrong thing. Yes. He, not, he didn't choose God. He chose the, the sin. And unfortunately, we are in the fallen world. But God, and then 
But Jesus said, I have said these things to you, that in, in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. But take heart, I overcome the world. Jesus is saying, Jesus came to save us eternal life, gave, give us the eternal life, but to save us right now, in the middle of tribulation. But because of, unfortunately, the devil wants to bring this wrong image of God in, the, in our lives. And as Pastor Gabriela shared, the, this verse is 1 Peter 5, 8, 9. And, she, and the verse said, be sober mind, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Resist for Resist him, amen? Resist him. This is the first thing that he, she, she said, the second, yeah? If you remember, yeah, the second. But I said another thing, the another part, firm in your faith. Firm in your faith. In a tribulation time, you have to have this right image of God. Because when you have this right image of God, your faith will be firm. Because you know who you are. You know who you are believing. You know the God that you serve. Like Pastor said, you know that he's a good God. He's amazing. You know, um, when I, three months later, we start, after my son passed away, went to heaven. Three months later, we start to lead the church again. We come back. And I remember that the first time I had the, the meeting with the, 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 my disi my, the, the discipleship, I have discipleship, kids' discipleship. I get them together, and I remember that I was in the, my closet, changed my clothes, and I have to put a kid's a T-shirt, you know. You, you know, have power in these T-shirts, girls. Have a power. When you put this, it's like a, 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 a army, arm, arm, An a, armor. armor that you are, you are putting yourself, you know. And I just uh, put the T-shirt, St. Vine Kids, Fort Myers, and I start to cry, and I say, Jesus, how are you preach for these girls? How I can have this strength? And I, I remember I saying, God, because uh, how I say I lost a kid. I don't, I don't, I'm not a mom anymore of three kids. And the Holy Spirit just said to me, no, you are not mom of th three kids anymore. You are mom's mother of thousands and thousands of kids. God, we are giving you, I, am, I will give you a thousand and thousands of ch children. You are not moms of just three kids. And I, then th this, this time beyond, I start to dream about the daycare. I start to ask God about the daycare. I start to pray about the daycare. And now my husband is so happy because all the time I have a baby in my arm. Yes. And he's happy now because I don't. Well, I will not ask anymore for a baby because now I have a lot of babies and kids around me. <laughs> but now I have, and we have as a church, and we start to have this beautiful daycare. And this is, uh, I always share when I share the testimony about the daycare, is just God's saying that time, I will make you our mom of thousands and thousands of kids. Amen. Amen. And I know that if the worship team can, can come, please. Like, like Pastor uh, share, I want to, through this word, encourage you. And I want to encourage you to keep going. I know this is just a few things, yes? You can uh, put, uh, write down a lot of things can uh, stop you to keep going. But it's just uh, 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 things that the devil and the circumstances in your soul and your, in the world, we face uh, to resist uh, us. But as we learned yesterday, we just stand firm in our faith. We just look to the author of our faith, Jesus Christ, and say, God, I need you. I need you, Jesus. I just need you. And the first Corinthians uh, 15. Let's just stand up and share this verse one another. Everybody, come on, stand up. I'm going to put the verse there. I wanted the brackets like I put it in my verse. Make sure you put the brackets there. 
1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58 is the final admonition of the apostle of grace, Apostle Paul, and the bracket say sister, okay? And he's, he's showing us the way of the overcome. When we when we are called, we receive with the calling um, gifts, but in, in the form of seeds. And these seeds needs the proper environment to flourish and bear fruit. So tribulation, time, persecution, misunderstandings. What did we share here? Um, the temptations of the devil, the flaming darts, the roaring of the fake lion. This is all this pressure, this heat to, to break the shelves and, the, and the, the layers of the seeds of the gifts that are within you. That are within you. One of the amazing things is that when I, I, I preach with my broken English, when we come in the stage and we dare to step into these grounds of being real missionaries in an English-speaking uh, nation, um, we are always remembered, we are always reminded that without the grace, we could do nothing. And I know that when we misspell something, when we still don't provide everything so perfect, it's just ways to encourage you. You also can do it. You also can allow the pressure, the heat, the tribulations, instead of stop you becoming to turn into fuel, into your gas tank, to become this nourishment, this this inspiration to say, these are not going to stop me. These are going to actually will encourage me to move even faster to the purpose of God. And that's what Paul says. 1 Corinthians 15, 58. You're going to turn to somebody and you're going to say with me. Say, therefore, therefore my, beloved my beloved brother and sister, brother and sister be, steadfast. be steadfast. Come on, let's say firm this word. Say, be steadfast. Be Say again, be steadfast, be steadfast. Immovable. immovable, always abounding, always abounding. In, the in the work of the Lord, knowing that, knowing that in, the Lord, in the Lord, your labor, your, labor, your, ministry, your ministry, your life group, your life group is, not is not in vain. Say to somebody else, is not in vain. Not in vain. To somebody else, say, is not in vain. Come on, say to at least two more people, say, it's not in vain. Not in your vain. kids' life group is not in vain. Your ministry is not in vain. Your church is not in vain. Come on, two hands up, two hands high. Let's worship Jesus together. Father, you call us. You anointed us. You gifted us. You gave us everything we need. God, to bear fruits. Not our own, but fruits of the Spirit. Fruits of the Spirit. God, we want to keep moving forward. We want to keep running. We want to keep fighting. In the end, we want to keep the faith. We want to keep the faith. God, we want to see kids becoming disciple makers. Father, above us, upon us, there is the word. The plow man will be overtaken by the reaper. We're going to see kids, little children, God, that are still just this raw soil, this, this soil to be prepared, becoming at once, suddenly, faster than we were even thinking about it, God, in disciple makers, in multipliers, oh, disciples that make disciples. We believe, Lord Jesus, that you are moving among us through all the leaders in this place, every church, every city, every family represented over here, God, the anointing, thrusting us, oh God, catapulting us to the next season, to the next season of fruits and multiplication. We believe, Lord Jesus. We believe, Lord Jesus. Come on, let's